is John Obi Mikel. It is myself, Chris McCarty. It's the Obi Wan podcast made possible by Bet Winner at Cobham, the home of Chelsea Football Club. Lead the way, John. Let's go check this out. Come on, let's on. go. Where are we? We are in a place that I think a lot of Chelsea fans will know well. This right. This is the media room um, where you know the the manager does his pre match conference and. Um, you know, we used to also use this place for team meetings and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, were you at the front or the back? I think I, I was that right there. That was my spot there, right at the back. Right at the back, stay yeah. out of the way. <laughs> stay out of the way. When, I'm, when I know I've had a bad game, I want to sit at the back so that the manager doesn't, you know, doesn't tell me up in front of everyone. Exactly. Um, so that was that was the plan. So I used to sit at the back. Uh, Didier used to sit next to me. JT obviously sat in front. Frank, Ashley, Peter Tech. All sat in front. All at the front, you All and Didi at, at the back. Yeah. Me and Didi at the back. Cash you know 40 I mean? wings. Yeah, get out of course it get is. out of the manager's way. Right, this is, I guess, John, the home of the managers and yep. the captain. I'm sure JT spoke here quite a bit, but your domain was out there. Outside, yeah, that's where the magic happened. That was where I knew that my, you know, that was where I did my business. This was, you know, we come in here for like uh, team meetings sometimes and, um, yeah, but outside was where the magic happened. I don't remember you doing too many of these, John. No, no, no. I you never did, did well to hide. <laughs> you got away from doing these. Yeah, I got away from doing too many uh, press conferences. But um, but no, I mean, I I love a lot. You know, I love being here. Sometimes, um, mostly the time I spent here was during the team meetings. Uh, I was sat there at the back, and uh, so you know, good. I got out of the manager's way. You know, sometimes <laughs> when you know you've had a bad game, you just want to sit there at the back. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. That was the plan. After Jimmy Ryan tried to essentially kidnap you from Man United. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you remember the name? Oh Jimmy wow, Ryan, of Jimmy Ryan. Yeah, I'm Jimmy Ryan. Yeah. I'm a Man United fan, John. Yeah, Fergie yeah. didn't have the time to fly to Oslo to try and pop you in a suitcase and take you back to Manchester. <laughs> Jimmy Ryan did that. After all of that was said and done, you were eventually unveiled at this football club. Yeah. Your memories of of that day when Chelsea were unveiling you, Mikel Twelve. We got 12, yeah, yeah. You yeah. stayed with that number? I stayed with that number, obviously. Uh, you know, I uh, I mean, the memory that day was like, it was a massive relief, obviously. It's been going on for, it was going on for a year almost. Uh, you know, I couldn't play for any club. I couldn't play for Chelsea. I couldn't play for my United, uh, obviously, because of the whole saga. But um, after that was settled, it was a massive relief for me and to join the club that I really wanted to play for, which is, you know, which was Chelsea, for me was a massive, massive relief. And I just couldn't wait to be unveiled as a Chelsea player because it was taking such a long time to get settled. Uh, but after that was done, you know, I was happy to be here. Amazing career I had, won everything to be, you know, to be won. And, uh, you know, my memory here is absolutely fantastic. I will never, never trade it for anything. I've said to you off air, it's actually a brave decision to, to yeah. join Chelsea. Hear me out here, listen. I know Robert, Roman Abramovich is at the football club, but Jose Mourinho, the special one, has come in. Chelsea have won the league title. Twice, yeah. But Man United. Back to back. With Fergie, yeah. were the dominant force in English football. So hindsight's a wonderful thing, but in truth, back then, yeah. when you were given the choice, the brave decision in a lot of ways was Chelsea. I know, of course, the biggest club back then was obviously Man United. And every kid you speak to growing up wants to play for Man United. Of course, this young, new, vibrant manager just coming to the Premier League. Yeah. You know, uh, Jose Mourinho, the special one, managing Chelsea and has won the league back to back. And then you're sitting there thinking, Shall I play for the biggest, you know, manager in the world back, you know, Sir Alex okay. Ferguson, yeah. the biggest club in the world back then, you know, which was just my United, or shall I join a, you know, you know, a new vibrant manager, you know, you can see this going places with this club, with Chelsea. And how to make that decision for me was, you know, it wasn't an easy decision, of course, because, you know, you have family members saying, what are you doing? Go to Manchester United. You have your friends saying, what are you doing? Go to Manchester United, They're the biggest club in the world. What are you doing? You're going to become the first Nigerian player to ever play for Manchester United. And that's a massive thing. And then for me to, you know, to make that decision of going to Chelsea was a massive, massive decision. And, uh, you know, I was like, you know what, this is my decision. I'm going to live with it. I'm going to go with this. And, uh, you know, it's paid out really well. Yeah, you saw Mayfair is what happened. You know? <laughs> you, you I saw Mayfair, exactly. You, you checked and the I, weather forecast. I checked the weather forecast. I was like, nah. <laughs> Chelsea's fucking Manchester, up. no. <laughs> You've had 12 managers when you did have 12 managers <laughs> in your time in the football club. I'm always intrigued by this. We, and I, I put me in this, we, yeah. football fans... 
we put an awful lot of stock in what the managers say on a Friday yeah. ahead of a game on a Saturday. What do they say? What mind games are they going to play games, yeah. and all yeah. that? Do you as players, if a Jose, an Antonio, a Goose, yeah. does it matter what they are saying on a Friday? Do you players take notice of it? We actually do. do we you? actually do, especially obviously when you know Jose was here. We do because mind game starts here. The game starts on a Friday. Because you know he's trying to get into the club, whoever they, or, you know, whoever we're going to play next, he's trying to find a way to get into their scheme. Be it the manager, the players, he always says something on a Friday to 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 get into you know whoever scheme he needs to get yeah. to. You know he plays you know with the crowd. He tries to make sure he creates this atmosphere whereby if we go into the game, he knows that he's he was already one nil up. So for us, we paid attention for sure, and you know obviously you know. He, is he going to talk about the players? Is he going to give a little bit of hints who's going to start and who's not going to start? Of course we did pay attention to that. Would you ever think, oh, shit, we're in for a difficult game. He's just said that. <laughs> Was there ever that feeling? Well, you're thinking, oh, Josie, why did you say that? Not really, obviously, because he knows. No, he knows it. He knows we, you know, we follow him. You know, we, we listen to what he says. And then sometimes after saying that, you know, he comes into the, you know, into the dressing room, uh, maybe on a Saturday morning before that, it's like, you know what I've done? Yesterday, oh he was, yeah, yeah, I've I've ripped into them. So it's your turn now, you guys, to go up there on the pitch and do what you have to do and win us the fucking game. So I mean, his mind games was was absolutely fantastic, and you know he did that time and time again. I mean, obviously, the one man is that I got the you know that got the worst out of it. Of course, was Asen Wenger. You know he got into his skin. <laughs> you know he pissed him off. He you know the whole thing, and they both never liked each other. And that was how we never lost against. I don't think we lost against Arsenal while Jose was there. You know, I, I don't think we lost. Maybe one one, maybe then there, but he always knew how to play against Arsenal, and it starts on a Friday. A lot of signings have come through this football club. Yeah. An awful lot of signings, an awful lot of money has been spent on players that have been a up lot, here. Yeah. You're at the club 11 years. I, I'm always intrigued. Uh, I think it was Robbie Fowler. I had a chat with a Liverpool legend, and, and he would always say, bring in a new signing, that first training session was always imperative. It was imperative for the player to show that he belonged at Liverpool Football Club. Yeah. And he said it was imperative for the players to see is he is he at the level? Yeah. Is he yeah. is he built for this football club? And he said you could actually tell. 10, 15 minutes, he'd be talking going. He's he's not for me. You can players tell. would say that. Yeah, of course. Who tell. was the player here getting unveiled with a shirt that you were thinking, oh, what a signing that is? Is there anyone that springs to yeah. mind? Yeah, I mean, there's been lots of big names here, you know, that I've played with that have come that have sat on this, you know, that has been unveiled here. Um, I think one that springs in mind really, you know, when he came into the club, we all, not just me, everybody was like, wow, he's going to be big, he's going to be massive. Who? was Michael Balak. Michael when Ballack. he walked into the club, we thought, I mean, German captain back then, you know, coming from, was it Bayern Munich? Uh, for us, he was a top, top player. I mean, to sign Michael Balak, yeah. I, we never thought that was going to happen. Uh, but for him to come into the club, I think he came into the club the same time as Shevchenko. But for us, Michael Balak was the guy. And he came into the club, he walked in. <laughs> big, tall, specimen guy. It was like, you know, when he walks into the, when he walks into the room, Michael, you feel someone has yeah, walked into the room. There's a presence. There's a presence. He walks in with a massive ego. You know, he walks... The way Michael walks, you know, it's like, whoa, we've just signed a massive player. And then he comes into the... And he comes to the training, you could tell straight away the way he touches the ball, the way he trains. We were like, wow, this is so, a top, top player we've got here. He, he is a player that on day one, from on day the one, training pitch. From day one. Not just about playing, also about the leadership as well. Straight away, we knew this guy, yes. How, how, did, uh, how did JT and Frank Ooh. take to Michael from a leadership yeah, perspective? Yeah. Like JT, <laughs> from an on the pitch perspective, I mean, Michael Ballack, he made a career of scoring goals from midfield. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to go from midfield. I mean, that's what I'm saying. So Frank when he, yeah, <laughs> of course, coming in, Frank was thinking, you know, we are well. Midfield players were thinking, oh wow, we fucked here. Obviously, <laughs> you know, he's just come in. So who's going to play? Who's not going to play? Frank was always number one in the team. She, we know Frank was yeah. going to play, uh, and it's good. That probably then going to be who's the next two. You know, obviously it was fourth. She mostly we play back then. So um, and then of course Michael is going to play. Who's going to be the next one? So for us, the midfield was always, always a place where it was so much. Uh, um, there was so much competitiveness. competitiveness. You know, you, you you can't relax. If you relax, you're out of the game. You're out of the team. Um, so for us, Michael, we know was. 
and like like you know like I just said his leadership what what he when he came into the club not just training uh, playing in his leadership on the pitch uh, it took a while for JT and Frank to yeah. to, to kind of you know you know buy into what Michael uh, or who Michael is and it, it, you know with Michael he doesn't speak a lot he doesn't no he doesn't speak a lot but uh, you know he's you know he's he's a quiet guy off the pitch but on the pitch he speaks a lot so it took a while for everybody to understand Michael and then you know once he was integrated into the team he became you know uh, a big big part of the team it is great to be here with you at Cobham Chelsea training ground a home away from home it's great to be in here I feel like you never know the way the Chelsea go through managers I could be sat one day here <laughs> welcoming the press and John it is great to be here let's get out because the magic happens out there on the training pitch. Let's go. Come on, lead the way, John. Let's go. Beautiful day. I brought the sun back to Cabo. Look at that. I, John Obi Mikel, brought back the sun. To Cobham, training ground, my home. Look at that. Beautiful day, sunny day. Amazing. Well, it just backs So up. nice to be back home. It backs up what we said in the press conference. Yeah. This is why you chose Chelsea over Manchester. This is why I chose London. This is why I chose Chelsea over Manchester United. No disrespect to United. Amazing, huge, huge football club. But, but this is it. This club right here. Look at this facility. You, I mean, beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. As a football player, this is all you need. Yeah, but it is these fields though, John. This was home. This was your domain, as yeah, this was, saying. Yeah, exactly. This was home. This was where we came out. You know, we come out every day um, and, uh, you know, show what we can do. Show the manager what we can do. Why you want to be on the starting team, you know, come the weekend. Why do you want to be in the starting team in the Champions League game? Whichever game, this is where you have to prove that. And this was where the battle, the competitiveness happened every day. You have to come out here and prove yourself. In there, no. It's out here. You have to prove yourself. Show me out here. And this was where it was done. You know, I, for 11 years, every single day, was trying to prove myself out here. And, you know, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. A lot of massive, massive ego. Big name players came to, you know, train here. I was honored to play with a lot of them here. And, uh, yeah, this was where we, you know, we, you know, our salaries that we paid. This is where we came out with our job. And earned them. Who was the, the, the very best, John? You talk about getting your game face on. And a lot of Chelsea fans may think, well, JT set the standards. Yeah. Frank Lampard, his insatiable work ethic, we've heard stories about. Who for you, though, were you looking at? Coming out of that training centre onto this field, who would you be looking at thinking, he's on it, he's always on it, day in, day out? Frank was the guy that you looked at, that we all looked up to, I think. Even when the academy kids come you know, come to train and they see Frank after training doing, you know, shots of doggies, you know, shooting, trying to, you know, trying to improve day in, day out. He absolutely loves, loves training. And JT as well. JT absolutely loves training as well. But Frank was just on a different level. And he was the guy that we all looked up to in terms of training. And um, no, day in, day out, he was always there training and trying to get better. So we've been into the car park of New yeah. You had the best cars. Years at the club. Best cars. Frank, Frank had a yeah. Frank, yeah. Frank had few nice cars. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah Frank, yeah. Frank had a few nice cars. Uh, Ferraris and yeah, yeah. Frank was the guy. Didier had a few nice cars. Um, Bacalele, Bacalele was it two cars. Um, but uh, I think these guys. I think Frank, Didier, Bacalele. And I see it as well, like, yeah, some class guys. What about best dressed? Best dress has to be Frank, always looking clean, always looking nice, classy. Uh, I'll have to go with Frank and Didier. Okay. Who is the DJ? The DJ in the dressing room, Didier Dogma. Yeah, Didier, he loves his music, he loves his Ivory Coast music, you know, African music. No, Spice Girls. Spice Girls. <laughs> We weren't listening to that, no. We weren't that soft. No, of course you were. <laughs> we weren't that soft, no. But yeah, music was music was good. Now, who was the happiest? Solomon Kalu. Um, they call me and him Tom and Jerry, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you know, were, who were yeah. Jerry? Stop. <laughs> I think that was Tom, he was Jerry. <laughs>
but both of us in the room, uh, it's, uh, you know, the fun we had, um, you know, we, you know, we absolutely love each other, you know, uh, he's my brother from another mother. We, you know, we, we, we absolutely love each other. And, uh, no, he is an amazing guy. He's never angry. He never gets angry. Uh, only one time he got angry. And that was, uh, he got angry at, at uh, Michael Balak and they had a massive fight, massive fight out there as well. Yeah. I think after a few days they were fine. Yeah. A few days, but this was why we were so successful because everybody wanted to compete. Everybody wanted to be on the beach to win, to play. You want to be on that study 11 come the weekend. And that's why we were so competitive there. We were so competitive with each other. But at the end of the day, we're friends. We fight, we kick each other, we shout at each other. But we were friends. You know what I mean? JT grabs you around the neck, comes at you hard, and then puts his arm around you. It's just the leadership, and it's just the way we 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 you know we were so competitive back then, and we were so we were so successful with that. There's always going to be one. Who was always late? There's someone who's always late. Who's that? Who's that? Someone who's always late. Ooh, Nicholas and Elka. No, it was always early. To be fair, was it Romelu Lukaku when he came? Yeah. Was yeah, it? yeah, he was always like a lovely guy. Was he? Was he? Just a kid, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then big he got kid. yeah, big kid. And then he got you know, we had a chat, and then you know, he realized that you know he needs to, you know, he needs to get be better with time. And then you know, he sorted it out, and it was fine. Um, I was also late when I first joined the club. Obviously, uh, when you first joined a big massive you, club like this, this, yeah, you're getting to know the place and everything. I remember I was late. I think it was a game against Barcelona, Champions League game. So it was the, 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 the night before the game, we, we trained in Stamford Bridge. So I was at home chilling. I, 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 it wasn't like I was sleeping. So I just didn't, the timing, I didn't get it right. And I was in my house, just about to start getting ready. Guess what happened? As soon as I arrived, didn't say a word to me, didn't speak to me. The players were giving me all the evils. Um, and for two, three months, I, I was out of the team. I didn't play a single game. I think it was about two months I didn't play a single game. The punishment then was severe. I was never late again. Did JT have a word? Yeah, of course he did. Of course he did. Pull you around the sun and said, listen, you have to wake the fuck up. This is Chelsea Football Club. You have to wake up. You have to know your time. You have to, you know, train well, be early. And after, since right after that, I was always early, 10 minutes early. 10 minutes early and up till today if I have an appointment I'm always 10 minutes early I know that came from that the best wingman who's the best goose if you're Maverick who's goose the best wingman oh for me I'll, I'll, I'll definitely say Kalu Kalu was the guy last one as we're sat on this bench are you emotional coming back here I mean the sun is shining and I, we were just talking all fair yeah you spent 11 years at this football club. You lived out the dreams I did. of tens of millions, hundreds of millions of kids around the world. Forget yeah. Chelsea Football Club. You played professional football. I did. At a highest level. Does it make you emotional? Of course it does. Uh, walking in here again, I was so emotional when I came out of the car. And just remembering coming in here for 11, 11, 11 years every single day, this was like, this, this was my home. This was, I spent more time here than I spent at home. Um, yeah, talking about dreams, I lived the dream. I absolutely loved what I did. I absolutely lived the dream. There was nothing better. This was the best out of it. Best out of the best. Being at this football club, representing Chelsea Football Club, for me, was absolutely a dream. And to be able to build this club to where it is today, because we did. Yeah. We brought this club to where it is today. By being successful, winning trophies, you know, that's why this club is what it is today. And for these players today to be able to enjoy all this, it's an absolutely, you know, I get emotional on that because they are enjoying all this because of what we've done. And I hope they can also be able, they can also be successful so that the next generation can enjoy the same thing. You know what I mean? Uh, so for me, I, uh, I lived... I lived the dream. I was living five minutes away from the training ground. There was nothing else you can complain about. This was it. We've had Victor Moses. Yeah. We've had uh, well, Tosin at the Rabai. Tosin, hopefully, yeah. He's, he's, he's going to be. For a young Nigerian kid watching and listening to this. Dreams do happen. I mean, I was, I think Celestine Barbera was the first. Abiyaru. And then I came after Baba. And then, of course, Victor Moses. Now, hopefully, Tosin will come as well. Uh, so, 
you know, you want to see kids that are dreaming, you know, from Nigeria, from Africa, all around the world. Kids are dreaming. They want to be here. You know what I mean? And to, 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 to see kids live their dream and, uh, and achieve their dream in life. For me, I dreamed and it happened and I lived my dream. And Victor Moses came after that. So for me to be able to set a standard, you know, for African players, for African kids, kids around the world, uh, that's why we do what we do. We love doing what we do, playing football and also being a role model to kids. It's incredible. I'm jealous. I'm, I'm listening to you and I've got goosebumps. John, <laughs> you have lived a dream that I've certainly had and a lot of people are watching and listening to this. It's great to be in Cobham, home of Chelsea.